Good morning, church. Welcome to another great day of paradise. This is Memorial United Methodist Church, the greatest United Methodist Church in the world. Hey, that's good. Yep. I'm glad you are here with us. My name is Watanak Hing. I'm the pastor here. It is my privilege to serve you, to walk alongside with you, to lead you in the spiritual journey. Today, we are here together to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because this is what we know. I love you. Jesus loves you. And there is nothing you can do about it. Amen. How about this? You tell everybody. You look at everybody and you say, I love you. Jesus loves you. And there is nothing you can do about it. One, two, three. Friends, Jesus loves you so much. Are you ready to worship him? Come on, I want more energy, okay? Let's do this together. Are you ready to worship Jesus? Yeah. All right, friends, let us worship. I hope that today you will have a great day that God will touch you. You will leave this place knowing that you are closer to God, that, that God will fill you with joy, with love, with happiness, and you will be forever different. Amen? Let us worship. Now, I would like to invite the light to come in. As the light come in, as everybody understand that this is the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is dwelling among us all. The Bible says, wherever there are two or more of us gathered together in His name, Christ is with us. And this is the Spirit of God with us all. Without forgetting our friends online as well, we are live, friend, on Facebook and on YouTube and on our website. When you are watching this, I pray that God will touch you wherever you are. And when you have time, please do not forget to come check us out. In-person worship service, we have masks on, we follow the protocol, we clean our hands. It's a great time together. And when you fill a room of 90, 80 people, that's how when you feel experience the Holy Spirit. So when you have time, please come join us. Okay? And why did little just? Good morning. Good morning. Remembering to let the Hmong language begin, let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us as we say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is in the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 41 to 51. Reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Then the Jews, yeah, please rise if you're able. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors 
ate manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of the scripture. Let us welcome our children. Let's give them a big round of applause. They're going to come down. They're going to hear wonderful stories. They're going to learn something new today. And they will be ready for our children program after the school, after the church as well. Right, children? It's great, friends. Look at these people. Woo! I think I have the cutest son in the world. All right. Good morning, kids. How are you all doing? Thumbs up, doing great. Thumbs down, not so great. Thumbs sideways. If you're just, ah, uh, because you had to wake up early on a weekend, kind of cool. Oops, excuse me, magic trick. All right. <clears throat> Do you guys remember what we, did, uh, we talked about last Sunday? Yeah? to your mom <laughs> okay so let me show you a picture I ran out of paper at home so I couldn't print it so hopefully this shows do you guys see a picture yeah do you guys know what this is cookies who likes cookies raise your hands yeah you show everybody a picture of the cookies yes oh wow that's pretty popular. All right. Do you guys know how to make cookies? No? Do you guys know what ingredients go in cookies? Flour, sugar. You know what else? No? Have you guys tried making cookies before? You have? What, what else goes in there besides flour and sugar? Cookie dough, you guys did the shortcut way. That's awesome. So there's flour, sugar, eggs that go in there. And then if you want like fancy stuff like chocolate chips, you could do that. Or M&Ms. So if you mix those all together, and then you put it in the oven, and then it comes out, it's amazing, right? So do you know what the fancy name is for all those, um, for those instructions in making cookies? It starts with the letter R. Do you guys know? Recipe? Yes, recipe. So the fancy name for that is recipe. So there are recipes for all types of foods, not just for cookies, like the um, donut holes I brought for you guys, there's a recipe to make that too, like recipe for bread, right? So, um, the word recipe comes to mind today because today's scripture that was read um, says that Jesus is the living bread. Do you know why Jesus is the living bread? Okay, so remember um, Jesus, when he was alive, he went out telling stories, and he did these miracles, and people kept following him for more. So it's like, you know how the bread, or like I said, like, you know, there's different types of grains um, from different cultures that nourishes you, and it's like a staple of your diet. The diet is um, um, the food that you eat to give you energy to sustain you. So Jesus is the living bread, so he he's, sustains us spiritually. So as he um, traveled all over and told all these stories, 
and performed all these miracles, people kept coming because they wanted more of that living bread. They wanted to sustain their soul, right? Because we want to be good people, right? We want to be kind. We don't want to be a person who's always upset or grumpy all the time, right? That's not fun at all. We want to be nice. We want to be kind. So these people wanted to be, um, have you heard the term, um, be like Jesus? Being like Jesus is living like Jesus, doing what Jesus was. Jesus was a very loving person. He had no hate for anyone. He was really upset. And he always tried to see the good in everyone. Like everyone has good um, characteristics, right? There's somebody like say your siblings, there's something about them that annoys you, but besides the annoying part, they are, you do love them or you don't know it yet, but deep down inside you do, <laughs> that they do have good qualities to them, right? Because they're a part of your family, they make your family whole. Jesus is the bread that feeds the people, and he's there to, um, there's a term called um, eternal life. So it's, you die, but you don't really die. You, your soul continues to live. You, it's not like the end for you. So that's what Jesus came to save us all to do that. So there are recipes to, you know, be like Jesus. And the recipes are, you know, to do good things in the world, to worship in God's house. And if you are able to read the Bible, to do that too. And the main one is prayer. Remember prayer? Yeah, and prayer is just anything. You can just have quiet time and just talk to God and be like, hey, God, I'm having an awesome day. Thank you. Giving praise to God. And if you're having problems or a bad day you also talk to god about that too like god today really really sucked i didn't like it but i just wanted to let you know and maybe help me to have better days or to be a person that appreciates you know everything to find the silver lining the silver lining is trying to find the good quality out of a bad situation right can you guys understand that so that's a recipe to be an amazing Christian. You don't always have to be perfect. We all make mistakes. And when we acknowledge those mistakes and be like, God, you know, I really messed up today. And, you know, I'm sorry that I accidentally kicked my brother or sister without my parents looking, you know, that thing. So if you say like, hey, I, I, I messed up and I'm so sorry, you know, to ask for forgiveness then you are forgiven. So we have to remember those recipes, like the recipes, flour, sugar, and eggs, and chocolate chips, they're boring by itself. But when you put those all together in the oven, it becomes something very delicious, right? So if you put all of those recipes together with worshiping, um, you know, being the best Christian you can be, prayer and everything, it becomes a really wonderful experience, okay? So if we can try to remember that, we would be an amazing Christian. All right, everybody, can you guys bow your heads and pray? Repeat after me. Dear God, we thank you for Jesus who teaches us the recipe of the living bread using prayer, worship, and stories that we can enjoy and share with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you, children. serve a risen Savior. He's in the world 
today I know that he is living whatever men may say I see his hand of mercy I hear his voice of cheer and just the time I need him he's always near he lives he lives Christ Jesus lives today he walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow huh that was very good thank you so much thank you thank you wow hey how, how how do you like it so far it's great eh yeah so a couple friends was driving and then um the 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 uh, uh, the, the driver was so mad and so he he all of a sudden cut cut other people off you know and then um uh, his friend who was sitting on the passenger side said well remember your wristband WWJD, right? And he said, yeah, yeah, WWJD, that stands for what would James do? <laughs> Instead of what would Jesus do, eh? All right, friends, let's bow our heads in time of prayer with me. Let's breathe deeply and slowly. Allow the Spirit of God to be with you right now, wherever you are. Think about people who sit next to you, on your left and on your right front of you or behind you. Pray for them. Pray for your pastor as he is ready to speak. Allow God to open our hearts and hear the word today. Lord Jesus, 
May the word of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to your sight because you are my rock and you are my redeemer. Amen. The bread of life, friends. Remember that's from last week, right? We know that our heart is, is, is empty. It has a hole that cannot be filled. And we need that bread of life to fill it. And we, we experience it. When God is in us, we feel a lot better, so much more complete. And we want to share that bread of life to others as well. Last Sunday, we even came with an action item saying, we will have a booth at Farmer's Market. The booth that say, food for the spirit. We actually have call boot. Um, we actually have the application. We're going to fill it up and see what we can do about that. Amazing, friends. Let's keep it up. And then today we read the, continuous, the continuation of the scripture. And then verse 41 say, I am the bread that came down from heaven. All right, friends, let's, let's, let's imagine with me a, a little bit. Let's say you've been worshiping a God. You've been worshiping God so far. And then all of a sudden, outside your temple, outside your church, outside your, uh, your place of worship, there is a man dressing like Jesus with long hair and everything and come to you and said, I am the bread of life from heaven. Follow me. Believe me. What would your reaction be? What would you say? Um, a liar. Um, you must be a lunatic. Why would you do that? Oh, you probably have heard about that person. That person must have done a lot of things, right? Helping people become heroes, changing lives. And then you're like, yeah, you are a legend. Okay, you can call yourself the bread of life. Would you ever call that person Lord? Would you ever th call that person, consider that this person is the creator of the universe? This is Jesus came in, coming to all these disciples and the religious leaders standing in front of them and proclaim to them, saying that, I am the bread of life from heaven. But you know what happened? When they heard the I am statement, I am the true one. I am the good shepherd. I am the bread of life. You know what they heard? They heard, I am. You know what that's all about? That is when Moses encountered Jesus, encountered God at the burning bush. Remember what Moses asked? Who are you? The sound from the burning bush. I am. It is that I am. It is the deity part of God showing out to these people. It is that word, I am, so powerful. And I know when Jesus spoke it, the disciples and the religious leaders must have felt it. Wow, this is amazing. This is nothing like I have experienced before. This is the presence of God. Remember another time when all these soldiers come to arrest Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus was praying. And then these soldiers came and asked, who are you? And Jesus said, what? I am. And guess what happened to those soldiers? They fell backward. They felt the power of the divine God. They fell backward. When Jesus said, I am, the disciple felt it. The religious felt it. Oh, wow, that's amazing. You too, right, have experienced the power of God in your life. One time or another, or another when God came to your life and completely transformed you, change you for the better and you will you will always worship god i remember an incident when i was uh, a, a christian in cambodia a, a neighborhood next to my church was under fire and then the church opened up the sanctuary to host people so people could come and sleep in the sanctuary among the victims one as they um as uh, my church member 
my church member came, brought her stuff, whatever she could, and she came to the sanctuary, and she found a place to sleep. And so what she did was, she was trying to find a place to sleep next to the foot of the cross. And she said, I know I lost everything. And right now, all I need is Jesus. And all I have is Jesus. Because I know that despite the fact that I lost everything, but Jesus is my bread of life. He has a future for me. He has done it before, and he will do it again. I don't know why my house is under fire. I don't know what the reason behind it, but I know God has a plan for me. And it was a very viral story in the congregation when she did that. Friend, the same thing as you. You have experienced God many times, and nothing can unexperience it. And that experience will transform your life forever. No matter what happened in your life, no matter how much busy you are, how, how, how depressed you are, how disappointed you are, how mad you are, how sad you are, whatever going through life, you will always come back and worship God because you know that at the foot of the cross, there is the source of life. Because you know God is the bread of life. Because you know with God, your life, your desire will be fulfilled. I know that all these disciples must have felt like that. But the religious leader though, the religious leader come and say, but this is not, is this not Jesus? The guy that, that was born from Joseph and Mary? Do you know that the, the people that we know, Joseph is a carpenter, you know? Not even a, an engineer, just a carpenter. Um, yeah, but, but how can this be God? What's going on here? You see, through life, there's always something like that, right? As we are moving through life, as we are living life, there's always be the naysayers. There's always be the pessimist. There's always be the skeptic. There's always be the, the gossiper. Right? There's always be the troublemakers. They come and stir up the situation. They act like they know everything. They have all this experience. They wear all these robes. They have all this credential. They have all these titles in front of their name. They know everything. But then they say, I've tried everything and nothing works. Don't you ever come and do this to me? And that's what the religious leader was doing. Right? But Jesus did not let that happen. Jesus is focused. Jesus is focused. He focused on the ministry that God has entrusted in his hand to transform people's life, to change life, to bring light to the world. So my point to you here, don't you ever let the naysayer, the pessimist, the gossiper, the troublemaker, to stop you from being where you are, where you want to be, from being the person that God has planned for you. Remember when they say, a black person will never become a president. Guess what happened? Dun, 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 President Obama. Remember when they say, Donald Trump? This guy's a joke. He will never become a president. Dun, 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 you just proven wrong, right? Who was the president before this? Donald Trump. Remember when they say, he is too old. It's not going to be a president. Come on, it's too old. Who is the oldest president on earth right now? Well, I mean, in the history of America, if not our current president, Joe Biden. Don't you ever let the naysayer to stop you from anything. Oh, Asian are not good. They cannot do sport. Guess what happened? Olympic, the greatest sport in the world. The medalist of all around, the gold medalist of all around sports. How do you call her name? Sunny Lee. Dun, dun, dun. Among friends, right? And we celebrated. Don't you ever let the naysayer, the troublemaker, the gossiper to come and stop you from moving to the direction that God wants you to be. If God calls you to be the president, aim for it. Because it will be there. You will get there. If God says yes, who then can say no? 
Remember what Winston Churchill said? As you are walking along the way, there will be barking dogs. Ignore them. If you keep stopping and throwing stone at those barking dogs, you will never reach your destination. Winston Churchill. Right? How about you turn to your friends now? Turn to your friend now and say, ignore the barking dogs. All right, let's turn to your friend and tell your friend, ignore the barking dogs. Yeah, ignore the barking dog. It's not good. It's not good. They're not going to bring you anywhere. All right? Be like Jesus. Listen to God. Be focused. What does God has called you in your life? And you can do it because our God is an awesome God. Amen? What did the song never sing? Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom. Them and power and love, our God is an awesome God. Let's sing it. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom and power and love. Our God is an awesome God. He is an awesome God, friend. He loves you. He has the he has that perfect purpose for you, and you're looking for it. And if you aim and if you focus on God, He will take you there, regardless. Regardless. And then later on in verse 47, the scripture says, Very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. Oh, that's a big word. When was the last time in your general conversation with either your family, your co-workers, your friends, that you ever used the word eternal life in whatever context? Have you ever told your friend, believe in Jesus, you will have eternal life? Why not? It's a good word. Very hopeful. That's what you want, right? But I guess you feel like um, if they ask me, what is eternal life? Then you don't have the answer, so you don't talk about it, right? I know I've been a Christian, but I cannot answer that, right? What is eternal life? Well, eternal life is what? Everlasting life, living in heaven with God. So, so what is heaven like? What is heaven like? How many of you have been to heaven? Well, if you've been there, you probably don't want to come back, right? So you've never been there yet. How many of you have been to heaven? What is heaven to you? Some of you explain heaven as... It's like the camping ground, somewhere in the redwood, that you enjoy the scenery, the magnificent creation of God, and you feel like it's heaven. Right? Some of you, heaven is like getting an A on a paper that you spend so much time on it, that you pull so many overnighters to write it, and then you got A on it, and you're like, yeah, heaven right here. Some of you, heaven is like, Going fishing in Yosemite, sitting in this wonderful place, enjoying the beauty creation that God has given to you, and you get good fish that you want. That's heaven. You know what heaven is like to me? Heaven is like that one night. I remember when I was in college, I shared a room about 150, 200 square foot with three other friends, so four of us together. Living in that room, we rented, we, you know, we have a little corner to sleep. That's about it, you know. Um, clothes in the basket, you know. Very small, but very intimate, very fun, good memories. I remember one day, a lot of other friends decided to come and join us at night. We came and talked. In the room, there were about 15 people, and we just keep talking. We talk of one another. We, we talk about old memories. We talk about the accident that happened, the incident that happened, and we just start laughing, and we laugh, and we laugh, and we laugh so hard. I call it a heaven because I laughed so hard that I was crying. Everybody thought I was crying, but it was so funny. It was so great to be, a, to be, to be in great fellowship with all these friends, and guess what? They didn't want to go home. They like it a lot. Now it's midnight. They don't want to go home. Now everybody is tired. They don't want to go home. 150 square foot, 15 people in the room, what are you going to do? At that time, I was thinking, guys, 
There is no way that I can lay my back on the floor without touching any of you. It's so difficult. But nobody want to go home. It's too late at night. Everybody going to spend the night there. And what do we do then? Guess what we did? Turn up the light. The room became completely pitch dark. All of a sudden, you heard people snoring. Here you go. Everybody sleeping wherever it is. Touching or not, I don't know. Remember when I had to wake up in the, in the middle of the night to go to use the bathroom? There's no way I can put my step without stepping on anybody. And I think that was heaven. It was great. We talk about it all the time. When I, when I went back to Cambodia, always remember that night. The best part of it is, when it was about 11 o'clock, we said, I'm hungry. Everybody started to say, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. And guess what? There's no fridge. There's no snack. Nobody has any money to go, any, go outside to buy anything. And guess what we do? The answer is drink water and sleep. <laughs> drink water. Fill, the, fill, fill your stomach with water. And that's what we did. And that was the best day in our lives. That was heaven right there. But you know, heaven is more, like, more than that. I think that was just a glimpse of heaven. If you look at the Bible, if you study the Bible, if you read the Bible, or if you just Google it, typing the word uh, heavens described in the Bible, you will see many verses describe heaven to you. And let me tell you this, heaven is a real place. Heaven is a real place where God is. It's a real place where God is, where we will see God face to face. In all these scriptures, okay, this is based on the scripture. It is where you see God face to face. It is where you will worship God and sing praise to God. Hallelujah. Or whatever the song that John was singing. It is all these praise and worship that we can offer to God in person. It is the place of, of no evil. There is no hater there. There's no racist there. There's no gossiper there. Remember, gossiper cannot go to heaven. There's no, there's no bad people there. Everybody is enjoying this fellowship of believers just like these 15 people in that 150 square foot room. You just share love to one another. You just enjoy each other present. Heaven is like a place where you can learn and grow. That's the best part of it. It is not boring because you will always learn and grow and grow and grow and grow and learning about the grace of God upon your life. And the, the last one is this. Heaven is a place where you will be doing meaningful work. Can you imagine that, that you go to work every day, it fulfills your life. Because, because, because whatever you do, you are transforming whatever that is not organized to become organized. And so satisfy your life based on your need, based on your desire, based on your talents and your skills and your preference. That is heaven, what heaven is like, friends. None of us have been there yet, but we look forward to it. Because the presence of God in us it's good. But at the same time, we remember that we are called to bring heaven, to bring heaven to earth right here. So as we are living in this earth, we are trying to experience the glimpse of heaven. What are the glimpse of heaven that you will experience, friends? When I study about what we all are doing in this church, Memorial United Methodist Church, the greatest church in the world, I mean it, because we are experiencing the glimpse of heaven every day. You experience a glimpse of heaven when you, when you, when you decided to, to spend time to call your friends to wish them a good day. That's all you want to do. You might be very busy, but that's what you want to do. 
You experience the glimpse of heaven when you decide to go pick up your friend to church, even though it is out of your way. It is a glimpse of heaven when you decide to come and join the youth group to wash the car. I know you could have enjoyed doing a lot of other better things on Saturday, but you decided to spend four hours straight washing cars with the kids. It's a glimpse of heaven when you buy the car wash ticket and you bring the car to wash it yourself. <laughs> I think that's great. That was rich. It was a glimpse of heaven when you can bring, give your skills, your talents to play music and to sing, to lead people to sing and worship. Think about it. Think about what are the glimpses of heaven? It is the glimpse of heaven when you decided to come in a group to strategize so that we can make our church to become revitalized again so that our church can grow young again. It is not an easy task, friend. It is not. It is a lot of headaches. It's a lot of moonings. It's a lot of obstacles. But you decided to put yourself in that headache situation. Because if you say, no, I cannot send a SWAT team to go get you from home, you can decide not to do it. That's you perfectly fine. But no, you decided to be in this place together. Why? Because you experience a glimpse of heaven as we are living on earth. We are trying to bring heaven to earth so that those people who've never experienced the bread of life yet, they will be able to take it and taste it and enjoy it and never turn back and able to live life to the full. Life with purpose. Life with love and happiness. How about you turn to your friends again? Turn to your friends and ask them, do you like heaven? Let's do that. Ask them, hey, do you like heaven? Come on. Hey, do you like heaven? Yeah? 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 Do you like heaven? Do you like heaven? If you do, can you say, I do? Amen. Do you like heaven? Amen. Amen. We like heaven. Life is not in here yet. We are working our hard, our best according to what God has called us to do, doing our part, doing our shares. The glimpse of heavens that I said, just a little bit in the list, you know that. There's a lot of other things that we all have put together. Keep it up, friends. That's how we do this together. That's how we change life. That's how we live according to what God has called us to live, to do, to be, and to become. And to God be the glory. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, Thank you for being the bread from heaven to us, Lord. When you say, I am, we know that you are God. You are amazing. Lord, please continue to inspire us, convict us, Lord, push us, lift us up, allow us to be stronger and more bold and live to the full according to your will. Bring us, Lord, into the community of faith as much as we can because we know we experience the glimpse of heaven when we are amongst your people. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us so far. May your name be glorified. May this world be transformed. Because you are an amazing God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, our church is running so far because of your support. And thank you so much for what you have been doing. Your offering means a lot to us. We cannot do this without your help, your generosity. So I, I, I ask you, I beg you, that you will talk to God, that you will, you will open up yourself and see what God has asked you to do. What is it that you can do to give, to help the financial support of this church? Is it the same as last week? Is it the same as last month? Is it the same as last year? Or is it more or is it less? I don't know. 
Whatever God calls you to do, please do that. Don't let the naysayer to stop you from doing it because you know when you give according to what God has called you to do, when you know that the money has gone to the right direction, again, I say don't give to the church. Give to God through the church. That's what we are doing. And if you believe that our church is working as the mission together for God, then we are able to give. Maybe you cannot give too much. Maybe you can give a little. Whatever it is, friends, may God bless the hands that give. And for those who cannot give, I totally understand it. And I pray that God will continue to bless you that one day you will be able to give, that you will be able to live, live the, this generous life. Because when you are generous, friends, that is also a glimpse of heaven that you can experience at this time. You can give to the, in the night text right there, we have the offering plate, or you can give online. Go to Memorial United Methodist Church of Clovis. You can give online, or you can go into the bulletin. There's the barcode that you can aim your camera, and then it will lead you to the giving site. You can give on, through PayPal that way as well. All right? I pray that you will continue to help support this church. This is the best church in the world, man. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. It's just amazing. I'm so excited to, to say this. And, yeah, let us now pray. Let us do the prayer together, all right? The prayer of dedication. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. We bow before you and thank you for the privilege to participate in your act of kindness and love here on earth. May these gifts truly become instruments of your purposes here in our church, our community, and around the world. Amen. So let us sing, sing it loud, sing it proud, okay? If you want, clap your hand and dance if you would like to. There we go. Right, right. on. I'll go into the world with thanksgiving in my heart. I'll go into the world. I'll go into the world with thanksgiving in my heart. I'll go into the world with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. Happy anniversary! He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. Joyous, for he has made me glad. Amen. 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 <laughs> Friends, the light of Christ has departed our room. That means the Spirit of God is with you as you leave this place. God is not just only here in this place. When you go out, the Spirit of God will inspire you, will love you, will, con con will convict you, will, will lift you up wherever you are. So please remember. Please be courageous. Please be bold. Please be daring. Because God is always on your side. So when you leave this place, may the Spirit of God continue to be with you. God is good. God is good. And all the time. God is good. Let's practice one more time, loud and proud. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. God bless you, friends. I'll see you next week, if not earlier. All right? Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, people online who worship with us as well. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs>